Thanks for stopping by. I like to preface this video by saying it is not an editing tutorial, but it means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own project. If you're like me and really enjoy having something on while you work, sometimes you find that the content you like is very visually engaging, and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. I've been on a streak. I just had a new lease on productivity. It seems like I was so rejuvenated um, from yesterday being Thursday, or not Thursday, today's Thursday. So Wednesday night, um, I attended a web seminar really about um, Juneteenth, uh, which is uh, the celebration celebration of the freedom of slaves in America. And um, with that being the moment of celebration and reflecting back, um, we listened to um, Sherilene um, Eiffel, who talked about her work with um, civil rights, her work with voters' rights, and the continued efforts that um, her colleagues and she have been going through to make sure that um, the momentum doesn't die down with um, the Black Lives Matter movement in America, and then just not only Black Lives Matter, but systemic racism and, uh, and the, the whole fabric of America. Um, there's a book I have to read now called um, The Color of Law, uh, which does go into a reason, the reasons why a lot of the things are the way they are and how they were built around racism. And it's a hard truth. It's a hard pill to swallow, but it is the truth. But I will say that after being really down, really depressed, honestly, I can't I can't say it was anything other than a bout of depression, a depressive moment in my life where it was hard, and it has been hard. It hasn't gone away, but listening to her really did rejuvenate me and gave me a new sense of, you know what, it's it's oh, it's not okay, but it's getting better. It's it's a slow, slow wheel toward progressive change toward meaningful change, toward impactful change, and if you don't agree that that means that there are good things coming, I'm sorry, but I do think that means that there's a chance for more good things to come for people who are, um, who are oppressed, who are, um, thought of as less than in, in any social construct. And it's not political, it's a social thing. So, you know, I'm not going to be on my soapbox to talk to you about that because I do want to talk about what the video title entails. And that is working on the jumbo magic number blanket. If you watch some of my previous videos with this project, you know that I used the original magic number blanket that's below and modified that. Um, pattern to hopefully make a larger blanket, not a baby blanket because that's what the pattern is, but scale it up so that it's a blanket for a grown up. And I wanted to apply my, my fuzzy math skills to convert it into such. So I am working on the first block of, or the first color segment of this tri-colored blanket. It's um, consisting of the main highlight, which is a beautiful blue color that I love, and the outsides are the muted color. So I have like this beige tan color on one end, the first um, triangle part of the blanket, and then I have a gray Karen one pound that I'm using for the very last end. And so this, oop, this is where we are right now. Um, it's a slow process. I'm only increasing one stitch per row and where my where my stitch marker is right here uh, only about here is a hundred stitch stitches or so. It might be a little bit more than a hundred but it's it's around a hundred up until this stitch marker from here to this stitch 
around 100 stitches and I need to have at least 100 more on the other side of this marker before I can even think about my next steps. So I have to get really, really long before I can start adding my stripes with that middle color and then go to my widest point and then start decreasing again. So we're, we're gonna be here a while, but it's a good, it's a good project, I think, to have with you if you are one if you're doing the baby blanket you would have you would have been done already by now or at least halfway through um but with this longer this longer one it's gonna take a lot because it's one row each time but i actually liked it like this because it um i don't even though i am gonna eventually have to knit a very 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 long part it's not going to be for a very long time and then I start to decrease again so it's not like from beginning to end it's all the way over all the way over all the way over so I think slowly getting back down to one stitch on my needle is the is going to be the part where it seems like it's a highlight <laughs> of this of this project and since I'm just using uh, Karen one pound. It's gonna take a while. I mean, I'm surprised I've made this much of a dent in my My ball of yarn already, but the one good thing about the Karen one pound is there's no dye lot Because it's just a chemical makeup that they're using to dye all the yarn So there's nothing really unique about each ball of yarn. So heaven forbid I run out of any particular color all I have to do is either go online and buy a new uh, ball of this lot number or this color number or if I re really want to risk it I can go into Joann's but I really don't want to. Uh, my aunt was in Joann's um, in her town uh, not that long ago we were talking on the phone about it because she is a seamstress she loves to sew uh, if you are new here, she makes a lot of the different things I have in my background. My kitty cat decorations, the cat blanket, the pillow, the pillows with the cats poking out over the top. Um, she made the Hello Kitty that's right here. I stuffed it though. Um, she made the Pikachu. I have some other flower pillows and some other cat pillows um, here on the couch with me and she made those as well. So, uh, recently she was in there because she was making masks for my cousin. Uh, my cousin still has to work out of the home for her job and she goes through several masks a day. So my aunt had made a bunch for her and I, actually I'm really curious because I got an email alert that I have a package from the post office coming my way and it's from my hometown. So I know my aunt sent me something and I told my partner, I'm like, I bet it's masks because we were talking about it. And I'm like, yeah, uh, masks are great. And I thankfully don't need to use a lot yet because I don't go to work. I'm working from home uh, with my job right now, but my partner is going out because of their job, even though they have uh, greatly reduced their activities as of today today was like their last day they had to kind of go in for like a two-week period they were going in and now it's kind of subsided for the most part so they're back to kind of a working from home situation but they still have to go in at least like once a week or so um, and then when I have to go back uh, it's highly recommended strongly encouraged strictly enforced that we have our masks on and you would usually have to wear a couple a day because they get all wet and steamy and then they stop working because of your um, your breath and stuff on them so I was like ooh I wonder if she's sending me some masks she didn't tell me she was but that's my that's my assumption just based on our recent conversation and my partner's dad has been making masks too and sent um, him some uh, just this past week so we're gonna have all kinds of masks I think which is gonna be nice because it does take a lot it does wear them out a lot when you wash them a lot 
so they do kind of lose that uh, fiber that is essentially supposed to be there to protect you so you can't the more you wash them the more you wear them out so you do have to replace them after a while but I'm curious I'm hoping it's cats she mentioned that she had some cat fabric that her cousin or that her cousin that my cousin didn't want on her mask but um, my cousin's daughter loved and wanted the cats and I'm like heck yeah cats like I would love cat masks and I think she was listening, so she might. But then again, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's something else, but I'm hoping. If it's anything, I hope it's a cat mask. Uh, but yes. Um, but anywho, so my, um, why am I talking about that? Oh yeah, so my, my aunt went to Joanne's to get some more fabric because she needed some, and she needed elastic. And she said that they are they're like rationing the elastic at the Joanne where my my aunt lives and you have to stand outside a long time they only let certain pe amount of people in the Joanne's at a time and if you're going to get elastic or get fabric cut then you have to draw a separate number because then they can't have people crowding around at the cutting counter to to get the elastic and the elastic is cut at the cutting counter too like you tell them I want elastic and they give it to you and they charge you for like how long your string is you can't just buy like a packet anymore um, of the thin kind like the the wide band one is widely available like nobody's fighting over that but the kind that's the right um, width to make the band that goes around your ear that's that's the one they're restricting use of, uh, or access to. So, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So, I don't think, for the sake of just getting some more yarn if I need it, I don't think I'm going to go in in person, just because it sounds like it's going to take a long time just to get in there to get what I need. But I have a feeling I won't get to the point where I need to buy more of the of the yarn, but I will be prepared. So I hope you guys are all having a good day. You'll notice there have been several videos of me um, from today, and they, your your eyes aren't deceiving you. They, it's all been Thursday, uh, and after I got done with a really long meeting, I t uh, came up here to finish filming because earlier in the day I got a mystery box from a black owned makeup company that I had my eye on for a while so that video is already up and I uploaded another video that day so I had a two for two for one so that folks who are here for knitting wouldn't feel empty handed because I was like well that's that's not what I'm interested in. What are you doing uploading? So I had two to have ready for that day. And then of course the video before this was me showcasing um, some goodies that I got for myself and some goodies that I had accumulated uh, to give to my brother while I waited for the puzzle to come in. And now I'm filming this one. But between after work when I did my knitting video to uh, the video of the show and tell I took a nap I was just like it hit me like wow I am done with work and I am very sleepy and I just need to go to bed so I feel like maybe I need to go right back to bed now um, I actually just cleared off this couch and laid down um, I slept like I called like my vampire sleep where I just stay as, as flat as I can so that I don't turn my head because I still had all my makeup on and I'm like I'm just I just need to sleep at this moment I don't want to get up I don't want to take off my makeup I'm gonna sleep right here so I fell asleep and then my partner had to come in here to work out and so they woke me up and then I just got up and walked into the bedroom and slept because I'm still in my, my clothes, I just slept on the top blanket <laughs> and and folded it in half so I wasn't like in the sheets but I was just on the top top blanket and 
I rolled over, but I had to then sleep like a princess. So I just put my my hand like right here so that I wouldn't turn my face into my pillow and smudge my makeup. And I think I did pretty okay. Uh, so I was like trying to be so strategic, but I'm like, man, I am just tired beyond belief. I mean, I had been so much, but I think maybe something about knowing that I have a chance to rest tomorrow just gave me a sense of it's okay, you can sleep. I don't know. My body just is, it's going through some things. <laughs> With, with being home the whole time and then all of the stressors that are contributing to my mental health or lack of mental health right now, I've just been, I've been on one it seems like. Um, so this blanket, now I love the pattern. I mentioned before when I was doing this that I really like that just this KFB, you knit three and you KFB right here makes this very subtle ridge but clearly makes a border and I love that but this part of this edge is so rump rumply ripply that I looked at it later and I'm like oh my gosh why didn't I just slip stitch the first stitch for the whole thing and I would have had this beautiful edge this beautiful clean edge if I did that and I'm like darn it and I thought about that. I'm like, oh, it's too late. So my my inkling is that when I knit when I knit my next blanket, which who knows when that'll be, um, I'm going to make sure that I slip my first stitch so that I have a very pretty straight edge. And I'm hoping I can make that happen. So what I'm actually going to do is if I have any scrap, and you'll see, I'm, I'm knitting my throwing because I just want to get through this row instead of trying to practice with um, a new technique like um, continental knitting. I really want to try continental knitting. And shout out to um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, new subscriber, but you're new, and it's like Lens and something? No, I'm sorry, I'm butchering that. <laughs> the highlight will be right here of who you are, but thank you for letting me know about um, the Expressions Fibers tutorial on how to do Continental. She seems really fun. I'm like, oh, very, very jazzy person, so... Uh, yeah, her, her Continental looks like some other world stuff, so I think it's going to take a bit. I'm going to have to practice with something, but I figured I would probably try with a, a sample. I don't usually do samples, but I might need to do a sample square of what I want my blanket to look like for when I knit my beautiful color block summery blanket with the yarn that I got from Hoot. Um, very excited about that whenever I get to it. It's definitely going to be on my to-do. But now I'm looking at the box. I just moved it to the floor and it's right there. I'm like, I need all the stuff in that box to go into my 300,000 tubs that are over here of like all my other knitting that I have kind of waiting lying in wait. I have a lot of yarn just lying in wait because my partner keeps playing musical chairs with all my boxes that I've been accumulating and um, most of that is like my brother's gifts but um, while I'm editing, while this is all buffering and the ether, I'll be up here making sure that all the packages are cute and ready to go so that one day um, hopefully tomorrow I can ship out my brother's swag and then I'll have at least a little bit more space and I can probably put the the knitting on the shelf where I was keeping his stuff. But yes, slip stitch 
Um, maybe, I mean, I'm totally fine with just making it all about the colors and not so much any like super, super fancy pattern. But I am going to look online for some fun color ways to kind of integrate this color blocking idea that I have without having to cut any yarn because I want to use like every single bit of the yarn I can to make one big piece of blanket and thinking do I want to do like a seed stitch? Do I want to add a, a border or anything? I just don't know yet. But I think I'll have enough scrap maybe even from this project that I can uh, practice with it before I decide on what I want to do with the main the main fabric. So let me know in the comments have you designed any blanket patterns yourself? Have you always just gone with what's already available to save yourself um, any stress or frustration in trying to design a pattern on your own for a blanket? Do you uh, just go with the garter stitch or stockinette if it's heavy enough that it won't curl or do you add a border so it doesn't curl? Um, what do you do? If you have made blanket before or several, what are your methods of choice? Um, I really want to, I'm thinking like maybe I could just do for the bigger blanket a stockinette stitch with a border, like a very wide border so that it doesn't curl up on me, but the border of course would have a slip stitch so that um, it has a pretty edge, I love that, the pretty edge. So we'll see. It's, it, like I said, I have um, several other projects that are already on the lineup, so that one we won't see probably till later this year just because of how many other things I have down the road to work on that are more I mean, for, for, um, for Christmas I'm thinking, like I, I mentioned before, socks. I was watching um, that um, Expressions Fibers lady and thought, ooh, there was one video I started watching but then I stopped because I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'm getting way too far ahead of myself. I need to just focus on what I have and then maybe look at this later, but it was Magic Loop. Um, and I think... I think I understand how you can do it with two at a time socks, so I want to try, but I also don't want to mess it up because it's going to be a gift and I don't want to waste my yarn that I'm using for a special occasion <laughs> if I end up not doing it the right way, so I'm kind of in a, a bit of a jam when it comes to that but I am so excited, really excited to try something like that because I'm like, if I do two at a time, oh, also, I saw this other person, um, I liked the video, and she, oh, I forget, I, I just watched it last night, and I was like, oh, the game changer, this woman has a method <laughs> to graft a heel and graft a toe of a sock without the Kitchener stitch. And as I'm speaking this into existence, below you're going to see a description, um, below in the description, there's a link to her video. I'm saying that now because I'm going to make sure I find it and put it in there, but holy smokes, I'm like, it's a little, it's a little bit more to do to finish it up, but I don't like a Kitchener stitch. And, um, but I can easily remember what she was doing, so I'm like, cool, cool, cool. I'm excited to try that. I will try that with um, the rib knit sock that I'm working on for my brother's fiance right now. 
I will try her method and I will, when I'm done with it, I'll report back if it was a success or not. Um, because I just don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, and it's easy enough just to make sure you have enough. Because basically, from what I remember, you, you knit, you're like, you knit to where you get your last stitches that you need, where you would have usually let go of your yarn and um, cut it and started weaving it in as your kitchener. But um, instead, you you leave your, your active yarn and then you knit continued up with a little bit of waist yarn, contrasting color, like day and night contrast so you can really see what your stitches are. And then what you do is you fold it, you fold your sock inside out so that the toe, you see the toe and then that waist yarn is kind of like tucked in more. And then what you do is you take your, your yarn that you are normally knitting with, like your, your main color yarn, not your contrast yarn, or not your scrap, your, your waist yarn, but your main sock yarn, and you take that and you use your darning needle and you go into the stitches that are being held by that waist yarn and you go uh, out with the old, in with in the new, out in the old, so you, yeah, there, she has like this zigzag, so it's almost like a, it's what I would say similar to a mattress stitch but to graft the inside of your sock inside out and then so when you turn it back out it it looks great and I'm like oh that's cool that's awesome and that is for me easier because you don't have a weird setup or anything you just do in and out in and out in and out and you overlap if you came out of one then you go back in that one when you come into a new one and then you go into a new stitch and then you go out of the older you could, yeah I don't know gotta watch it watch it let me know if you have a method like that or if you always do Kitchener or if you think this woman just saved your life like she saved mine that's a little more work because you do have to knit she called it a chimney like knit up the toe with the waist yarn just enough so that it doesn't unravel and mess you up but that little bit of just knitting 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 easy easy and just do 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 easy um I like it I think I'm gonna do it and let you guys know how it goes but it's like I'm all for it I'm all for that and um yes so I'm excited to try that when I'm done with that sock <laughs> I'll probably work on that tomorrow because I have some editing to do, I have some links to find, and, and so I got my work cut out for me this evening for sure. And I need to charge my other batteries so that I have some more juice for tomorrow. Cool beans. All right, so here we have, we did two more rows we have a nice little bandana looking thing right here um, but you can see this is a 40 inch um, 40 inch length wire so even if I squish it I'm trying to think like how many stitches can I possibly fit on here super squished I still have quite a ways I can keep knitting so I'm not sure when you guys cut out. Uh, was I talking about the method for Kitchener stitch that's not Kitchener stitch? I hope I was not if I got cut out because I was praising this new method. So if I didn't, I'll repeat myself for just briefly, but the description box below has a YouTube video linked that shows a different method to graft together heels and toes of socks. That is not the Kitchener stitch. It does take a little bit more work because you're adding um, another few rows with waist yarn, 
to then fold inside out and use that waist yarn as a guide to seam in your your toes and your heels but it looks so much easier like the process itself of the sewing is so much easier looking to me than the Kitchener stitch so I really want to try that with the socks that I'm working on for my brother's fiance so I was just saying how awesome that's gonna be and and then I told you guys that I squished my stitches to the very end to see how long I can keep going before I might need a longer cord and then I, I admitted to myself and to you that I don't have anything longer than a 40 inch fixed circular needle however I did buy um, a longer one for the project that I want to do with the hooked yarn that I just bought um, but I don't I think I bought a size 9 needle of that particular length. However, it's not the end of the world if I end up running out of room on my needle before I get to the longest part of the blanket, I will buy a longer cord. No harm, no foul. Um, and then I can use that for blankets going on in the future as well. But I just wanted to let you guys know that. I was getting ready to leave anyway, and I looked up and I'm like, hey, there's there's nobody there, so what gives? Anywho, um, I will be filming some more tomorrow. Tonight I need to edit, I need to find some links. I need to get you guys going with all of this awesome information. Don't forget, um, links to um, the knitting tutorial. Um, that I found the alternative method to Kitchener Stitch is below, as well as links to um, minority-owned businesses that I have used myself and support. So it's different categories, so if something isn't your thing or you're not too sure, then uh, don't worry about it. But if you have some gifts in mind, things you want to try out, um, some yarn shop or actually the only yarn shop I know <laughs> that if you're interested in looking at then click away I'm not linked to these people like I don't get any money from them or from any purchases you make I'm just spreading the news because that's what we do here we share and we want to support so at least I do so that's what that's all about <laughs> um, so yeah Thank you so much for joining me again. I'm sorry I got caught up in my own little world and didn't realize that we cut out and I wasn't talking to you guys anymore, so yeah, I don't like it when that happens, but it does. It wouldn't be my channel, I think, if we didn't have some weird kinds of problems happening, right? That's kind of just how it is now. Um, but yeah, I hope you're having a good day and let me know about your blanket journey and what kind of patterns you like or if you've made your own before. Um, I'd love to know. I'm always interested in learning about new things you guys are up to and um, I would say, Jenny, if you're watching this, I do have the Bits and Bobs blanket in my uh, library on Ravelry now. Thank you for that one. Um, so if anyone else has some awesome blankets that uh, you have worked on either a pattern you created yourself or one that you found and really really love um, let me know there's also I think I've saved um, another one that was like a cat Afghan yes the cat Afghan um, I think there was a knitting version of that pattern but it might have just been crochet but either way it was awesome so I have that one too as a one day I will do that <laughs> So yes, um, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.